Hello and welcome back to VIP Access. If I do say so myself, this is one of the baddest episodes I've ever shot. I'm so honored to today have the pleasure of hosting some of the baddest rappers on this continent. <laughs> this is also our very first pop-up event and live recording and I wouldn't be more honored to be sitting here next to ladies, women who've ruled the game when it comes to rap and hip-hop. Is all my claps zimekuja half half. Anyway, yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So without further ado, I would love, love, love to introduce none other than so soon. Yeah, what's up? Nazizi. Yeah. Femi Uno. <laughs> Thank you so much, my ladies, for coming through to VIP Access Podcast, this live recording, to have your presence. Um, is something so, like, I'm humbling, right? I, I just... I've been following you all in different um, ways. Um, Nazizi, we've you know, had an interview before, and it's actually one of the best interviews on my podcast. So soon we've done so many interviews during back then when I used to be at KBC. Femi One, me and your team, we, we, we roll so well. Like, I'm not talking to you directly, but I know everything that's happening. So I want to thank you all for coming here to VIP Access and also coming to have this conversation about the role of women in the music industry. We also want to celebrate hip-hop and celebrate the people who made Kenyan hip-hop what it is today. We can never write the story without the contribution of each one of you. So this is my um, gratitude to you. And without further ado, allow you to introduce yourselves so soon. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I don't even know how, Aniko, you're amazing. I don't know how you did this. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Susun. I'm a Kenyan rapper. I'm an East African girl. Santeni Sana for having me here. <laughs> Naz. Niaje. <laughs> uh huh. Um, Nazizi, um, the first lady. Um, Rapper out of uh, Nairobi, Kenya, yeah. a mother as well, and uh, I think I'm just so excited to be sitting here with other rappers, first of all. It was one of my biggest dreams when I was coming up, to have other female MCs in the industry. So, so proud of you too. And uh, thank you, Aniko, for having us. I'm so excited to be here. And thanks for coming out, guys. Appreciate you. Hi guys, um, my name is Femi Wan, Femi Uno, and I rap, um, I'm an Afrima Award winner, uh, first African female brand ambassador Monster Energy. I, li I like that introduction, she's like, I rap, that's what I do. <laughs> And I want to also send a special shout out to Groovy Joe. She's one of the dope females um, killing the game when it comes to hip hop. She's in the building. Thank you to Groovy Joe's team, Keep Your Power Agency. And she's going to be performing, guys. It's not over. It's not over. So we have time to network, to enjoy great music from um, Groovy Joe. So this um, conversation is a spotlight on you dope um, rappers. And, and one thing, Nazizi, I... I um, I credit you for is educating me and, you know, changing the scene, changing the game. Like, all of us know that coming up, like, in the industry, we looked up to you. We looked up to Necessary Noise. Like, that song, Kwanzaa Kenyan Girl, Kenyan Boy, shot in the Matatu, you know, and you're like, Nilikutena Naye, Nikipanda, 23, right? It's just like something that we all identified with something that made me and made us so proud to be Nairobi and so proud to be Kenyan. I don't know how you did that, but you don't realize, but you paved the way not just for hip hop, not just for females, but for the entire industry. You know, we like to say females, but if you are not female and you are male, everyone would be saying you paved the way for the entire industry. So today I want to say you paved the way for the industry, period. And Thank you. Yeah. 
And, and, and I wanted to ask you, like, who are the females who paved the way for you? We had this discussion, actually, um, on the DM. <laughs> um, all right, so for me, um, first of all, growing up, Konaskiza Sana Tupac. Tupac was just like, I had to listen to Tupac every day, right? Um, but then, then I came to realize there's also other artists, the female MCs. And uh, I have this uh, diary of mine, uh, school diary, like Kondika Homework. I had stuck the brat there, little Kim, MC Light. I think for me, hearing um, women rap and tell, tell the story from their point of view wasn't extra, like, too hard, too vulgar, too... It had some, some kind of melody to it. I was like, wow, you know, yes, there's Pac, my all-time favorite, but then there's these female MCs, and um, my brother, rest in peace, he was the one who would always say to me, Naz, you, you, you can do this as well, right? And I never thought I could, but I was listening to hip-hop all the time. And uh, to the point, they used to sell these CDs, I don't know if you guys ever saw those CDs where it was a single and it came with the instrumental. D did you guys ever see that? So I, I used to collect those. So every single I had, it had to come that single CD, it an instrumental, it a vocal spear, the three piece, right? So I'd be practicing the vocals, then I practiced the vocals to the instrumental, and, and, and that's how for me it started. But at that time, looking back now, I didn't have such a vision to say, like, I'm going to come. I'm going to be the first female MC. I'm going to change. It was just something I love to do. And I think when you stay true to something you love, eventually things open up and you start seeing the bigger picture. But it took a while because I'm telling you about a time when I was maybe 12, 13 years old. That's when I actually started listening. So, and for me, my all-time favorite was the brat that for me was like oh my god who is this lady you know um and i always tell people the story about many many years later i got to meet the brat and for me it was such a random moment I, I don't know if things are random in life but that for me was so random and i i was standing there thinking i grew up listening to this lady and she's right here. I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. But I think for my style, I never wanted to be like any of them. I just wanted to have my own identity, my own style. But I really looked up um, to the other female MCs coming up that time. Yeah. Let me one. When Nazizi was speaking, I could see your eyes and like you kind of were... Uh, in it, and I don't know if you wanted to say something to her or something about yourself that you know you, you came to your mind. You know, it's crazy when I was sitting there, I was telling my friends, This is the first time I'm having a one on one with Nazizi. Imagine, <laughs> we, we've always been uh, to the same setup, but we've never actually met. And anyone who knows me, like they really know how much I love Nazizi. Like, I grew up. <laughs> I grew up wanting to be Nazizi and uh, Ratatat and also uh, may she rest in peace, Lady S. Yes, uh, she really impacted me and who I am, especially my personality. Because I've always thought, and Siko, but I've always thought like Ratatat is a way better rapper than Lady S. Yes, but Lady S yes had something in her that people really liked. And she's always been herself. I mean, we talk Dandora, by the way. And I think that really uh, impacted me, and I've always been like, yo, me new lady mwamweki, me new lady mna rap na sheng. Yim kini like, mni like, mspon like, mdan like yo kombele. So, yeah. Talking of sheng, you are another one who is an apologetic when it comes to sheng. You know, you and your hubby can raise it. You changed the game also by taking it so street. I love that. So, so soon. We also give you your flowers. You've started a record label. Tell us all these things. You know, like, um, first of all, you know, um, Nazizi can sit here and say maybe she was inspired by Akina Lil Kim, Akina the Brat. Uh, but you see, like, everybody in my school, uh, I had a locker that had the necessary noise speak, yeah? From, 
So let me tell you this. Huh? So during our finals, time ya KCSC, unajua kila mso ambi wa clear the, the, the lockers, everything. It was a fight for me to pluck that off. <laughs> because I was like, e nice toy, you know. But um, this is not the first time I may meet. Um, I, I wish I meet before. And I seek one of your courage. And it still is something. I'm really struggling. Right. Because uh, what she did for the industry and for all of us females, me, I just wanted to be like her. Just like what Femiwana said. Like, like dressing like her. You can see me like today. Like just everything. Yeah. I mix her. But sometimes as a rapper, kuna, kuna tuki to about us. Uh, we express ourselves so much. Maybe sometimes we are a bit sensitive because everything we say comes from deep within. So it makes us, um, let me just appreciate you so much for everything you did, yeah? Thank you. And Aniko, it's such a, a big honor just to be on this platform with these ladies because um, rap for females, the industry in Akwanga is so male dominated. So for us to, to do what we do and, and stand out and be like we are here and we speed buzz, and we can kill it just like you or even better. It's not even a joke, man. It's, it's amazing. So thank you for having us. Wow. Um, can I say something, Aniko? First of all, both of you, thank you. It's like love fest, right? Usually it's hate fest when rappers are in, on one stage, right? So this is amazing. Um, I, I can tell you for very many years, I was backstage as the only female MC and it broke my heart. I would come backstage and just see a lot of men there. And I was asking myself, like, am I inspiring anybody? Like, is this real? Like, what? where are they? You know, like, it's 10 years now. Like, I'm doing something wrong. You know what I mean? And for me to sit here and say that I inspire them, great artists is like such a big deal to me. Because that's what I did it for. I wanted other female MCs to believe that they can do it. They can kill it. They can be the best. And if I had to stand up another 10 years and do it on my own to show them, I would. And I'm so proud of them to, you know, come up here. And let me tell you, from a, from a rapper's point of view, it's not easy to come up here and give somebody else love. So that's so big of you guys. I love it. She said we met for the first time today. I didn't believe her. I feel like Namjua. Because, no, nah, I was like, She's like, no, really, we've never, because I, I'm on her page, we talk, I comment, she comments back. She, I've seen her wearing an Azizi t-shirt to a show, you know, and so soon, let me tell you guys, this girl shows me love. When I comment on her post, she calls everybody. Could you any morning as I'm commenting? I'm like, this girl, she's a star, you know? But um, to get that kind of love for me is a big deal because... Um, we, we also come from uh, painful places and that's why some of us write music to release that, you know, a lot of disappointment, hurt, pain. As much as we have the good vibes, there's a lot of that coming. And um, so having, you know, other people come up and show love for me is such a, such a big, big thing. So, Nico, thanks for making it possible would never probably have heard this queen say to me like, like that. So, Asanteni also for just being brave and doing that. Yo, that's amazing. And, and, and one thing I wanted us to do is also just have a spotlight on hip-hop. You know, hip-hop is celebrating 50 years um, this year. And I wanted to, to ask you all, like, what was your first experience with hip-hop? What was your first experience rapping? Um, we know in Azizi's song, um, Mama, Mama, Nataka Kuwa Rapa. You know, <laughs> but how old were you? And then at what point did you get into the industry and start to realize, wow, this is so male dominated? I think some of, some, some, what, some of what I'm asking Nazizi has touched on, but it would be great to just have you all converse. Um, how old was I at that time? Um, 15, 15, going on 16. Um, and. I think, like, my first experience, my first time on a stage was in school. And I like that schools give you the platform um, to, to perform, right? 
Uh, so I was in the in a talent show, talent show at school, you know. And me and my singles and my CDs, I had my beats that I'd practiced too. And I was so, so confident that Nakujo Kushindai talent show, which I didn't win. But uh, I think the point was I was confident that I was going to win, you know. And then I realized at that time that I'm one of those people who don't give up even when I didn't win. I didn't know until that talent show. Because I saw other people who hadn't won. They were sad. They're like, oh, you know, the judges were unfair. And me, I was just there like, I have to write a better song for next time. So I realized that, wow, I've got the, the vibe, the spirit to write. So that was my first experience. And um, I was freestyling. Like I said at the show, I was to be up at 2 West T, always trying to freestyle with the boys and battle and all that. Um, but the first time I got into the studio was to do um, Mama Mama. But the funny thing is, um, I heard someone saying they have a notebook full of, of songs here, right? I, I was that person too. I had a big lyric book like this. So when I, when I met Ted, I'm like, you want me to rap about what? And he's like, what do you mean rap about what? I'm like, yeah, we'll do topic Ghani, as in, I have all the topics here, you know? And every track I was rapping for him, he was like, no, mm-mm, no, mm-mm. And during that time, Kala Mashaka was big, huge. I remember seeing them in the corridors before I met Ted, and I was like melting. Like these superstars, they're here. Now what song am I going to do, you know? And um, so I, did it. I hadn't written Mama Mama, but the idea came to me like, I want to be famous like those guys, you know? That's why I'm here. And now all my tracks in my big notebook, you're saying no, you know? So I told him, I have this new concept. Give me a few minutes. Opened my last page on my notebook. Started writing quickly. And, you know, at that time, Ted was like, this kid, because he was told, Kuna Demana, freestyle, look on him, Noma, but he wasn't impressed. He was just like, you know, nothing special here. But when I did that chorus for him, he was like, oh, you got something. Yeah, let's try that, you know? So that was the moment that track was, um, was born. But I, I, I've never told anybody, but the way people received it was totally different from how I wrote it. I wrote it in a more corny, sarcastic way. <laughs> Nobody understood that part, <laughs> but it was fine. Because I was like, why are they so big? Why? Why are they so big? Why can't I be famous like them? But everybody was like, oh, so sweet. She wants to be famous like Kalamashaka. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I was like, okay, I'll go with that. I will, I will go with that vibe. And, and later on, they became really good friends of mine. And uh, they inspired me a lot in my journey. Used to be in Dandora every other time, um, you know, at the hip hop camp, hanging out with them and found out they're really amazing. And, and they really shaped my career as well because they were telling the D story and I was there witnessing the D story with them. And it kind of made me understand that that's what we need to do is to tell our stories. It's not just, you know, writing from a, imaginary, like imagining things, we can write what's actually happening. And so then it switched my way of writing, my way of thinking when I was writing lyrics because I could relate now, like we're talking about things that are happening to us. And when you do that, you'll be shocked at how many other people are going through the same thing. And, and that's how they relate. And so I really also big up Kalama Shaka because they really did stand up for hip hop. And they really helped me. They took me like a little sister almost, you know. Although Kila Sikorambe, where on a shubabini, where was he where's he relate na story? When him to a ubabini, I used to hate it, you know. Like, what do you mean? And uh, but now I understood, like the more I went to D, the more I understood how different our stories were, you know, and, and how important it is to tell different stories when it comes to hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my journey has been long, <laughs> but I started way back in primary school. So um, I grew up in Mwiki, and I had this friend, and it was Samantha. 
uh, we used to tulikuwa tunacheza ball tulikuwa tunacheza ball kata si of maisa wasi wa madhare and islanders on ajwa maisa so tulikuwa tunacheza ball and maisa had this uh, foundation in it wa haba na haba so we had akina mandela from sarabi walikuwa naimba and then there was a section for rappers and coincidentally uh, so the rappers were commented by wenyeji wenyeji from okoplani so i used to rap when i was in primary school and this friend of mine anaitwa samantha kanembia yo by the way uh, on weekends i go to this project iko iko d iko iko tunafanyanga isili uh, maisa and wenyeji wa come tuna rap now uh, so uh, she introduced me to them and we started going uh, with her and uh, wenyeji we used to go to up words and pictures a very big shout out to Buddha Blaze by the way uh, that platform was major was major uh, so we used to go uh, to Wapi every weekend uh, to na rap and then uh, we went to high school uh, we were we were a group of kids because uh, sisi wote tulitoka different places there was Mwiki there was Kayole Madare so tulikuwa tunajita Islanders we were like 10 of us uh, tulikuwa tunaenda Wapi to na rap and then uh, we get to high, we go to high school and kila mtu akaenda different high schools so me and Samantha stuck together because tulikuwa from the same hood uh, so we continued to rap uh, Samantha ka transition aka aka take a different path um, so i think uh, king kaka saw me at wapi and then uh when yaltaka kufanya remix ya ligiso uh, he contacted me and said i have this song i want you to feature in it and uh, from then i've been working with them and now uh, the hardest part i think the hardest part for me was transitioning from being just a freestyle artist to now an artist hakuna kitu ngumu kama kila mtu anaweza rap lakini ku make songs that that's a different like ball point so uh, we started working with kaka empire and now that's how femi one Um, uh, for me, my story, Sijui Kamane, as I say, it's not a very, it's not a complicated one. Uh, I just knew I wanted to, first of all, to sing. I never knew Nataka Kurab. So when I was in school, I used to freestyle mostly to songs than Aziz. So just, just doing that. Nilikutana na ye, nikipanda 23. So there, there was this guy in school, alikuwa naitua, anaitua Izo. Actually, I went to the same school with Timiti that. So we used to have a lot of functions to the, the music. So I thought I could sing. <laughs> so that was the thing. I thought I could sing. So a big shout out to this guy called Izo. Izo alikuwa nanisikia. Randomly. Randomly too. So he was like, uneza rap? Uneza rap? Then I'm like, Really? Really? And it's even funny, they just started calling me in school, Naz, Nona. So, so the name, the name so soon, ilikuja because nilikuwa nasema, so soon, itakuja kuwa, sa. Unona. Yeah. So, but in school, they used to call me Naz, Unona, because I used to love her music so much. I know this today is not about her, so I have to switch this so quick, yeah? So, um, at, nikamaliza chuo. Then, of course, I met Rezi. Tulimi tukiwa toisa and actually it was a school function, yeah? We didn't know we would stick together for such a long time. So, uh, we went uh, to and, and even make hip-hop babies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Rezi, after a few, nikimjua tu kiasi kiasi without knowing, akakuwa msem, a huge superstar. Unajua, I didn't meet him as a star. He was just boy wa Jerry, just a guy. So mimi sikuwa na juizo mtaje rini ni so napelekwa hizo ma area it used to be eh nyongwa nyongo ko pia kunyanganywa vitu ni i didn't know i didn't know hizo hizo ma ma roots so um nikakuwa hapo jomino i'm just seeing superstars naona kina dna naona kina kaya naona kina rezi akina visita everybody's a star but this girl is just here she really wants that platform but she's the only female in that studio and i don't know just how to go about it and be like me man zemi no na mkinie ka hapo ndani nitawachafua no so i'm just i'm just you know i'm i'm little time yani unaona kila mtu alafu banjuka is a big song teach is a big song so ukiona ni kama uta work now wase unaona utatoboaje wewe ujaingia kwa studio upcoming umeingia kwa studio wase ni master so i let that slide yeah, but still nilikuwa naandika tu mangoma, naandika tu. So Pacho came. A big shout out to Rapdamu. 
Diana Jita, Naiboy, a big shout out to him, yeah? So Naiboy had this studio that I felt very free. Very, very free. So I will go there to Koapo, Wasaniwa Nandi Kamavas. I many kanza kuona sasa indo yi opportunity. So anytime they'll put a bit like this, so that to show them, mini female, but I can do it. Nilikuwa nachukua daka kitogo, kama 10 minutes, hivi mini shama liza vas yangu. Nisha ingi yoko wabuth na ambia, yo beat me naeka, na naeka buzz. So all the time we used to do this na mtu wa kisikize yongo wama likuwa nasema, hey, so soon ana kill, so soon ana kill, so he kanza kuingia. Kanza tu kuingia, then I'm like, this is, I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be a singer, this is what I was supposed to do. So ni kanza kwa free, the beat comes in all the time, I kill it, I kill it, then I'm like, yeah, so let's do it, let's do it. So from there, um, still just the female rapper in the studio. So kuna Timmy, kuna Naiboy, kuna Akina Christoph used to come around, Akina Kinkaka, like it's just the males. I'm still just the only female in the studio. So I will see females coming around, but they used to give me your memory ya kujishkilia, because the guys are loud, the guys... No, they are stars. They, so females wana jishkilia. So ni kanza kuget uh, yondo toya one day. I'm gonna have a record label and I'll make sure it's an environment. If a female has a gift, they will always feel free to, to get in. So uh, so I think that is how I came up. Um, me, uh, I'm working also with a partner of mine. Uh, we have a studio in it number one records. Of course, I want you guys to know that it's not, it's not an easy journey, but it's something that I am doing to make sure that an industry of ours in a part um, opportunity for females also to feel free and come around and spit buzz. So number one records, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that is so amazing. And, and the reason why um, we have you all here is not to state things we already know like the industry is male dominated we know that and actually this is not only in the music industry many other industries but for me my curiosity is how d did you navigate it how are you navigating it um femi one and how can we um using our own networks platforms i don't know following power how can we um create more space and room for women because I believe there's more dope um, females in whatever field, in rap, but um, many times they, they go unheard, unseen. We don't see their videos as, as much. So how have you navigated? How are you navigating? And how can we create more spaces? Um, coming up as a, female rap, uh, as a female artist, especially a rapper, it's, really, it's very, very hard. Because one, society, na, you, you feel Nikama rap is for, it's for men, that's one. And also uh, the industry and the stakeholders, we don't have many people investing in female artists, especially rappers. Like, um, dema kipata ball, by the way, yodo yako ime maji. So a very big shout out to Kaka Empire, by the way, they really held me down for the longest time. These people have been with me at a kabla brand yangu yanze kumekdo. You know, they, they kept investing, they kept investing, uh, they saw the bigger picture, and here we are, laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, coming up as a female artist, you know, as for me, I had to do, I had to do Pila Onjeri to get uh, people's attention. And uh, would I do the same right now? I wouldn't because I know better. Like, uh, the, the industry is very, is very harsh on females. And as, a, and as a woman, I wouldn't want uh, to put another fellow woman down. So soon, it's high time when you unblock manzi. So soon, I'm going to block your story of Pilao and Jerry. So soon. Me, I'm going to block. Me, I'm going to block, actually. <laughs> Trying to find her. I can't. I can't. So soon, you unblock. Imagine you unblock. I, 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 I was young. I was young. No, I was I naive. To. I, I was young. I was young. I was young. I was young. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, <laughs> are you guys serious? I'm very serious, by the way. I'm very serious. <laughs> Nazizi, I will let you moderate this now. Uh, quick, quick. Uh, Unaweza kuwa unblock Leo. 
by evening by evening i'm going to be right both of you let me tell you nimejaribu kutag femi one sana kwa hii you know like oh like na try to tag i can't nyan blog nyan blog nilikuwa na try kutoka kwa blog sawa okay peace peace you guys welcome are both showing, welcome they're both showing me love and 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 they've blocked each other i can't welcome it has to stop it has welcome to stop to It wouldn't to be hip hop without that kind of beef, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not beef, it's all love. It's fun. Welcome it's to love. VIP access quashing beef since today. <laughs> This is amazing. I'm like yeah. Okay, wait. Who blocked who? Who has blocked? It doesn't me? matter. It doesn't matter. What matters we, is we are here now. See <laughs> you so soon. We are here now. Sana sana ni femi. Ah, miss yezi. Sana. Mimi ndio niliwadis. Miss yezi ku block. Miss ku catch feelings. Miss Kuka but I'm so, I'm sorry come I'll rub off the no, wrong no, way no. it's hip hop it's hip hop Femi you're not even blocked on my account you're not it's our, it's our we, are, we are good we are good mama you know we are <laughs> yeah but I'm saying it's it's uh when I was coming up there was really um akukuwa na madem wengi uh but kulikuwa na kina Sosu na kina Jerry akina Wangeshi and all that uh, but now I feel like uh this is It, it's a great time to be a female rapper in Kenya. Like the women are killing it. The Akina Saru, Akina Mandi. Mandi has just hit 1 million on a solo project. Single my gonna collab she's on that track alone. Yeah, like we need the media to amplify because this is big. This is big. Show me an African female rapper who has 1 million views on a solo project. It's a really great time to be a female rapper right now in Kenya. We are killing it. Atakama the media and the blogs I uh, want to say something different like take it from me. We are killing it. And I'm really proud of each and everyone and thank you Aniko for pl- such platforms. Unian blog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for me. Um I can I can't even, you know, this shows just how much passionate we still are about rap music, yeah. Uh, just seeing that already just shows me that eh hey, basi mimi na femi tunafaa kuingia kwa booth si ndio yeah as in it's amazing because this is this is something that we really 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 needed in our industry uh naweza sema especially for our platforms in Kenya kama uja notice saya tuna music awards uh we don't have them like your time si tulikuwa tunaonanga ni kama um, uh awards is so zilikuwa zilikuwa such a wonderful thing like we really 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 wanted to be on those platforms yeah but we don't have them anymore that means something is lacking and for me i always think it's because females are not in the industry one because you are red carpets the glam part of it so when 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 a genre is so male dominated hakutakuwa na glam time ya yo awards yeah So we need those awards and that's that's why as a female rapper I'm trying to create a platform where I can bring in more female rappers. So I've tried to work with Shanti Bobo, um I'm working with Shekina right now. I'm doing everything. I'm 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 putting on in every five shilling of mine. Hata maybe siju kama kesho nitakunywa chai, but I'm trying my level best just to make sure there's an opportunity for another female. So This is something amazing you guys keep on supporting and keep on promoting us and and for now uh what I can say just just being here just being here the the three of us it shows it's very possible it's very possible possible for our industry to prosper and be everything that we need it to be so thank you so much Aniko yeah so so Naz I wanted to reference something you said in our first interview that I think we did in 2018 you said something that always stood by me you were like i even don't like this tag of female rapper because a rapper is a rapper i will let you clarify but you said some <laughs> um yeah i i really strongly believe that putting that female is almost like yes it's respect right but in a way depending on how they're using it it's almost like yeah there's rappers and then there's female rappers and like femi said i think right now when you look at the hip hop scene even in kenya the people holding it down are the women right 
rappers, period, not female rappers, they're Kenyan rappers. And uh, I think that we, as much as we are proud to be women in the industry, when it comes to rap, it, they need to drop that female thing, right? Because I know if I put Femi against any of these other rappers out here, she'll kill them. She, she told you she's a freestyle artist before she was a writer. If I put so soon with any of them, she's going to kill them, right? So why female rapper? Um, and, and I think for me, I think that way because for the longest, there was no that female rapper. There was Kunao, my rapper, then Kunanaz. Sindio. So there was no female rapper. So when it started, I was like, why are we putting that... That, that title, as much as we're proud to be women, yes, I feel like they use it to kind of say in another way, uh, she can't rap, she's just a female rapper, so that's why we're listening to her, right? So I feel like that's something like from now, when you're referring to like Femi or Sosun, she didn't say she's a Kenyan female rapper, you know, just say she's a Kenyan rapper, she's dope, that's it. And, and, and I think if we do that, it also empowers the other, the other girls, the ones who are coming up, to say, like, I will be on that same level um, as the other people, as much as it's male-dominated. And I'm looking at the scene now, in the hip-hop scene, and I feel like as much as we're saying it's very male-dominated, if we actually look at the numbers, it's not anymore. You guys have taken over, and you need to keep going. And I, I'm so proud that, that that's what's going on. Because I always feel like uh, the women will always stand through with something to the end. It's not just about one minute fame or the clout or the what. When a woman is passionate about something, she goes with it to the very end. Yeah. Asanteni. So as we wrap up this conversation, I, just, I think I want to throw just one question to all of you all. And anyone who has a question, comment, whatever... We'll open the floor. I'm sure there's going to be a few questions here and, and there. But I wanted to ask you all in your opinion, in your experience, um, in your rightful spaces, where would you like to see this industry go? Um, an industry, music, Kenyan music industry or hip-hop industry, however you want. And uh, what are the steps you personally want to do towards that or that you can encourage the listeners um, of this podcast or everyone who's here with us to do because I think it's one thing to retrace our history the challenges but Konyetuko, how can we move forward in a progressive way um, let me let me just uh, get on that quick um, I think our industry when it comes to to our own our own music sometimes see still watch the boundaries a little bit uh, if you travel, Utapata, most countries, they really embrace their art a lot, a lot. So in Kenya, to a lot of genres all at once, to a hip-hop, we even have rock music artists in, in our country, yeah? So recently, I know this is, this is actually the best platform for me to talk about this. So recently, a rapper came all the way from Tanzania and just to come in Kenya and say, Ukuni kwao, they can do, you know? And I was just watching this from afar, and I'm like, am I, am I really watching this? Like, is this really it? Because there, there are other artists behind us that should feel our industry is protected. Like, let me say, for instance, even if you go abroad right now, there are things you can't do when I can a snooper there, when I can a Jay-Z are there, because it's I can a Didi, that's the industry. They know the pain, they know the struggles, they know everything they did for hip-hop to get them there. Hip-hop feeds their family. Hip-hop is everything to them. So that industry is protected. So the only reason um, I felt this was not really it, I felt like, ni kama imiachiliwa tu kiplani, yeah? So maybe sometimes as females, we sit back and say, ah, lakini si kinoji wako hapo, lakini si akinokto wako hapo, they'll do something, you know? They'll protect, they'll do ABC, yeah? But then you sit down and see ni kama, ah, you see? So that was kind of, I'm not just saying this, but I feel like it was just kind of like looking down on, on the Kenyan industry. And I don't think I'm going to watch something like that ever happen again to our industry ever again. I, I didn't like it personally. So uh, what we can do for our industry to grow is 
first of all embrace each other and love each other and just know that this is art when comes to it nani amazing naza kona ngoma kali femi ya kona ngoma kali even if it's from afar unajua that girl is doing her thing unaona so all you do una maintain and you take it first so what as you asked again our industry just needs togetherness when you are koju we keep on embracing and especially what nyash is doing even collaborating with femi it's an amazing thing so if you are a dope rapper na uko hapo juu and you see mimi nikifanya kitu kama hii even in any way kuna venye ita lift the industry that's all we need like time to time to time so yeah yeah i agree with susun uh, and also i feel we need more people to invest uh, in women um, and also us as women we to collaborate more and also in terms of bookings i think to may improve to know now more women actually getting booked kitambo ilikuwa uh, line up iko na nine male artists and then one come the moja wakae ni kama wako na gender balance but, but today uh, tuna get uh, two or three women wana kwa booked so it's it's an improvement uh, and also when so soon we need more male artists uh, to feature women uh, a very big shout out to nyashinski uh, to king kaka and everyone else are putting on women and also aniko we need more platforms like this to share information like tunaweza share information uh, for the upcoming women uh, wakuen at least na idea of how the industry works and also the media wa amplify more of our success yeah so yeah for me i think um i come from a, a little bit different uh view I will say we've come such a long way and I'm and I'm happy of how things are going now and I believe that um if we can be at a point where there's three female MC sitting up here on the stage now that in a few years it will be bigger and better um and also I agree we need to invest more in uh, the talent yeah invest in the talent uh invest in structures you guys were talking about structures we need working structures um we need to get more bookings like you said but also i i think a big point that so soon said is we need to embrace our artists we need to embrace our artists um one of the reasons why i'm still here 25 years later is because of the love you guys have shown right um and i want that same love that people gave to nas from 25 years ago till now to also to the new artists as well right i feel like that's really lacking in the industry right now is we see femi up there pushing pushing we can see her she's really like holding it down but we're not giving her as much love as she deserves i'll say it We'll see so soon she's opened the the recollet but i didn't even know about it right till now that's not how it should be the media they need to headline things like that and so i think it's all our responsibility as well um to share guys we we we're living in a time where there's social media but we are happier to share content from other places and share some influencer's picture or her trip to some country then sharing so soon's news about her record label right and i think that's our responsibility or your responsibility as well as supporters as pr as is to support and to show love and to appreciate because one thing that artists really need is the support right and without it 10 years from now we'll be talking about femi alienda ama bona bona femi alinyamaza Eh, so soon what happened to we don't want that we want to be talking 10 years from now that femi is on a world stage right so soon has somebody signed in a big big label that came from her label so we can make that possible right show love show support be proud of being kenyan be proud of your people be proud of your artists big up kasiva we're so proud of you also thank you for holding it down <laughs> Yeah and um and also you know Aniko thank you so much for this platform. Um Aniko has also really pushed the industry in ways we cannot describe, right? 
So also you keep showing us love and keep supporting. As when you do an interview with Anuko, you, you also ask, that's me she's talking about. Me no nifanya hizo vitu. And that's because she researches, you know, and she does a thing. And that's also something that's super important is know your artists, right? Not just their name. When somebody asks you, so who's so soon? Have the info. Be proud. Be like this was her first single. She had beef with, you, yeah? With Femi Alim Block. Juaga hizo details. Very important to know everything. Because if I asked you about Beyonce and her Renaissance tour, you know the dates. You know which countries she performed in, right? But do you know where Femi is performing this December? No, that's not good. You need to be at the forefront so you're not there saying, wa Kenya wa support. Anza na wewe ku support. Start, you support, you know the tour dates, you know the info of the artists. Push the info. When you do it, somebody else is going to do the same thing and that's how we grow the industry together. And thank you for all the support till now. Tuki wapo kwa support, I have a new song in it wa Mtungi. There's there's a hundred of you. Please make sure you go check it out and comment. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Aniko has also reminded me. So I have my first ever live music um, event, a concert in my record label. This is the first ever we are doing. It's live music, yeah? So it's this Saturday. I've been pushing it. I've been pushing it. You guys follow us. So this Saturday we are doing one night of music. We are situated in Koloho Mall at the river. We have our first ever live, live, live concert. It's new artists, but I want you guys to come see them. It's a quite dope sana. Yeah. I, I am going to open the floor for questions, flowers. Esther, I don't see any flowers. No one at Tumikono. Eh, nimewashwa sana kusema hiki kitu bana. Oh. <laughs> Let me just stand here. Thanks Anyiko. So, I just I wanted I'm I'm very very passionate about spaces za wanawake katika sanaa. Mnajua I'm very very passionate. I wanted to add something about this tag female tata. Female something, female something. Katika karne hii 2023 this this century we have niche spaces that we create and some of these niche spaces are all female or all women spaces for example unazenda event and find um, you know for example for instance UN women have thrown a party and they've requested for all female performers now, my issue is, and it's a big, big challenge to us female creatives, how good do you get who could cross over from the niche of being associated with female spaces to the crossover of Mitunim Sani? For example, I know musicians who only play in all female spaces, but when you cross them over to the other side, wana yumba yumba. Is that what you're going to capitalize on? The fact that you're a woman or that you're female and whenever they ask for creatives in the female spaces, then you get chosen. I think we should sharpen ourselves and be so good that when you present yourself in a creative space, first of all, people don't see your gender. People see the art, right? People just see how good you are. I had an idea, and please copyright this. I once said, I had an idea of putting together a show, 30 minutes, but behind the curtains, an eight series show. And maybe the fifth episode is an all-female band, but you're playing behind the curtains. And when you get into the show, when you enter the space, you're given a scorecard, for instance, written bass player, keyboard player, singer, rapper, uh, violinist, da, da 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 And it has like a set of five names. And you get to tick who you think is playing behind. Alafu, Kimaliza, 
curtains na funguliwa and you guys mnaona who was playing imagine kwa hiyo female episode mnasikia mdema na swaga guitar huko nyuma mnasikia ma percussions mengine mna of course rapa itajipa kwa sababu ya sauti <laughs> but then imagine when the curtains are opened and to your surprise you ticked for example um let's say um guitarists say Izo Mogonda Ivy um Tugi um Jack Mogona and guitar meleuko and then when the guitar, when the curtains are open you discover higher it's Ivy that is a proper exercise to show us that you just you don't need to present your gender kwanza let your gender be the cherry on top that a umepiga na we ni mdem rather than we ni mdem unapiga vizuri for a girl ama for a female screw that I'd like to add something onto that uh, how we can get to to your point as as women professionalism that's where professionalism comes in like uh ukienda studio you just know you are working with this producer wewe ni msanii yeye ni producer hakuna mambo mengi ucheki na yeye and i think that's how we as women we will get uh kukuwa respected and that's how i think i've got to a point mimi na kuwa respected as male artist because we miss chekangi na say by the way uh, you want to book me we ongea na manager you don't get to talk to me directly i don't get to talk to you you don't know me personally so kukona create a uh, boundaries kukona hizo boundaries and kuna kuona respect uh, they'll treat you the same as they treat yes no favors no extra favors yeah um My name is Agnes once again and Arat Mdundo and before I ask my question I think I just want to give all the ladies their flowers I really admire Femi one for being part to par with male rappers like you see her in properly you see her in under the influence she's like giving Nyash a run for his money and uh, <laughs> uh, for Nazizi what I admire is that she started the pan african conversation way before it was a thing when I speak to my fellow Ndars from other parts of Africa we realize that we need to come together as Africans we don't need the east versus west beefs but when you started the east african bashment crew i think that was a very good example of what africans can do together regardless of their country um for so soon i know we've had conversations about your label uh, when you reached out to me um and i really admire what i love about so soon i love suraya kazi and it's a personal favorite because it's one of the songs i listen to encourage me on my grind it's one of the theme of my theme tracks of my grind so it's a really dope track i hope you can do more <laughs> songs like that hopefully for aniko of course i really admire what you do um, when you reached out to me personally to come here and also when you sent me a shout out and say i love what you do that really rubber stamped what we do because in this business you get tired sometimes you get frustrated with the frustrations the ups and downs being an endar being an entertainment writer is really hectic but my question is and i'm asking this as um i'm part of the panel for the uncut hip hop awards um shout out to ruby v for also keeping the hip hop culture alive i think she's really 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 put that conversation out there and that hip hop is celebrating 50 years um this year i just want to ask um do you guys think beefs are still relevant you guys have talked about unblocking each other <laughs> which is so interesting but do you think beefs are still relevant or is everybody deep inside their bag they don't want to you don't want to fumble the monster bag you're just like i i don't have time for beefs but do you think there or is there a way that beefs can be made to be um i don't know productive or create some form of positive virality uh maybe should i go on that sorry Um when it comes to hip hop uh beefs give it to Zilianza way back yeah kina paka kina naz kina all those people started there's just something about rap music rap music ina kuanga because for a rapper to be a rapper ufai kuandikiwa bars that, that is what i keep on saying because you have to do 16 bars you have to do 24 bars you can even do the four bars and be on different tracks at any given time so for someone to be a rapper kuna kuna ujasiri fulani unaona there's just something rappers don't wake up one morning and say they want to beef 
They just sit like this and watch something and be like, eh, hey, umse, umse, umse anafanya vitu kaa zangu. Ama umse, eh, hey, umse anamove, move kaa mimi. So, yes, yes, there's music, yeah? But rap, ask a rapper, kuna malina gustanga tu. Rap goes somewhere deep. People don't even expect to be. But, this is one, what I can say. Any rapper, when ye ame prosper, na aka do better. Apart from nazism, I never heard about uh, beef that na pale, actually. But maybe ninge follow up, ninge find out one, two, three things. Yeah, but um, most rappers when you wame kujo waka kuwa stars, na waka kuwa mega superstars and icons. When you follow them up, unatuve nye history ya beef ime wafata chini ya maj. It's just somehow. <laughs> so I don't know, I can't say it's something that should be encouraged. But um, hip hop scene, sometimes your bow to be like your stuff. I don't know what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it's part of entertainment. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happens, but the thing is, people don't go and sit and be like, Sasa, to Tengeneze, Iyo, Iyo, I work. You really have to, to be like, Apana, something is going on that I really have to be part of, and then you just get in, yeah? So our industry here, ukiona ime relax. All these people, akina bus, akina OG, akina Okto, all these people wame beef, yeah? As you can see, hapa Femi, alirusha hapo pila unjeri, though I didn't, I didn't respond. But I think it, it's part of hip-hop. It's, it's part of hip-hop history. Yeah, as long as we, it's happening in a way, yenye ineza kuwa controlled. It's something, I don't know, me, me I don't know, me, I just think it's I'm, it's I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of, of hip-hop. I think uh, beef is part of the game, and also uh, rap battling PR, it's part of it, and it's part of entertainment. So, Mimi, I'm for it. Me too. Hi, uh, my name is Albert, or DJ Mister. How I describe myself is I'm a big musical connoisseur. So, my question to you is how can a DJ work directly with an artist? Because I think internationally, artists, uh, DJs are able to produce music with artists. So locally, I know Cream de la Cream has been able to do it and a few other DJs. So just a question in how we can work together. And then you have highlighted the aspect of media companies being able to amplify music. And I think what you're saying is we should have something like complex but now in an african perspective so what would you like to see from someone who can be able to execute that and to tailor it to an entertainment perspective um all right uh, i think uh, the the first question was how you can work directly uh with artists um, I think it's always nice to be in contact with the teams, uh, with the managers of the artists and know about upcoming projects. Um, if, you're, if you want to maybe do a mix for the artists, you know, get permission. Because this is something I've seen happening with DJs where they use artist music without permission, first of all, and then load it up on, on, on uh, their platforms. In a few weeks, it's taken down. It beats the purpose because you've put work and energy into it. So if you're going to do like a mix or a special remix or something, you know, send it to the management. See if they like it. You know, build a um, kind of relationship with them, right? Um, also tell them like, you know, wh where do you usually play? And because artists always need a DJ for one thing or another. Many of them have official DJs, um, but they're always willing to... to to get new talent and to work with new people. And for me, I think the biggest way to do that is through remixing. We've seen even international uh, stars getting really huge remixes that do better, yeah? They're remixes that actually do better than the original. So as a DJ, maybe when you hear uh, a Femi track, reach out to the management, say, is it possible for me to get a three-piece? A lot of artists do provide that now and uh, work on some things and, and, and also be vigilant, you know, be consistent. Like, if you're going to send me four, five different mixes of five different singles as management, I'm going to be like, hey, this DJ, 
ana support sana and you know maybe we can do something with them um so i think that's one uh one one way you can uh work directly with the artists uh especially because now there's so much structure and uh copyright and all these things you don't want to be on the bad side or in the bad books and the other question the other question was Okay, so my other question was in terms of an entertainment company or a media network. So you've highlighted that uh, Kenyan media doesn't highlight a lot of entertainment in a positive way. How would you like to see that done right? Okay, okay. So, shh, keep it down, keep it down, guys. So I, I want to clarify. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody said Kenyan media doesn't highlight in a positive way i think we were talking about um um tabloid and other blogs wanting to cover more um i don't know like kicky stories scandals and stuff like that but that's not to mean that kenyan media are not supporting and uh, and don't support um all of these artists wouldn't be if they were, they were not supported by kenyan media so there there's a lot of media supporting and um i think Many times the industry were caught in the exchange and um, debate about why Kenyan media is not supporting or whatever. And for me, it's not progressive. So to see change, we have to be the change that we want to see. So if anyone doesn't like what any media is doing, start your own media. That's why I started my podcast. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you. So... Uh, my question, uh, my name is CEO, I am a musician and a music teacher. Uh, so this question goes uh, to Sosun with regards to number one records, okay? So uh, you've mentioned that you are trying to create an environment that is good for, for females and uh, for women. Now, my question is this, there are challenges that are unique to women that men don't face. For instance, in the corporate world, we have maternity leave for women, for example. And then we have this musician who is a woman who wants to, to have the family life, okay? But then they still want to have the music part and they need to earn a living through music. What, 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 what measures would you put in place to help such an artist the, the same way we have maternity leave in the corporate world where a woman can take three months or six months leaves, and then they, they still earn, and they come back to their career, and they are not dented. In music, when you may say, ma, they may keep at a ball as a, as a promoter, your investment, it may end up. Like, how, 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 how are you planning to, to counter such? My, my other question is this, yeah? Oh, step by step. One, oh, one question. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that, is, that sounds like five questions. It's a heavy one, yeah? Uh, something that happens, I'm so happy right now with what is happening worldwide, yeah? Uh, I've seen somebody like Rihanna, she's been pregnant all through the, the social media, Paka Venya Me Deliver, yeah? I'm seeing the same thing with Sierra, you know, for Cardi B. It's, it's something that hasn't happened in our... African continent, yeah? But I feel like what I can encourage, first of all, female artists, please work out. Please go to the gym. Please watch, watch what you eat. Watch what you drink. You can smoke. Just, moder just, just watch your health, yeah? So that in case something like that happens and you're heavy, you can move around. You can still go for interviews. You can still go for, for shows, even pack a six months. And, and just show your belly and do your performance. Yeah, I, I feel like... Yeah. I feel like it's not something that should put a woman down because women create life. And the moment you do this thing for long, now yeah. you cannot have a baby at that moment. Kuna time flani enye eji yako inakualao to have a baby at that moment, yeah? Kuna venye tumeumbua. There's a time you want to run around with your kids, so your career should not block you. Paka wano mefika 40s at because of that. You can still have babies and still do your thing. So the thing is go, work out, 
watch what you eat, stay healthy, maintain a good environment, good friends, good family. You'll be good. You'll be good. Yeah. So that's what I'm planning to do with my artists. Yeah. Hi guys. Um, oh, it's Stella. Oh, sorry. Okay, last question. We want to wrap this recording and panel. It's been amazing. Thank you all for your patience. Um, last question. And then we remember we have a performance, very special, exclusive performance for you VIPs by Groovy Joe. So stay here. When you're talking about dope females, you're about to see what dopeness is about. Stella. Okay. Lovely panel. Love the conversation. My main question is, as a woman in the industry, there's often sexualization and even over-sexualization. Um, in the 90s, we had Lil' Kim, um, and when she broke out, it was despite her having bars, no one really concentrated on her talent, but rather on her sexuality, being a woman, being able to sing in a song and all that. How do you think that 20 years or 30 years from now, we can change the narrative that I can be as sexy as I want, but still be a rapper with harder bars. How do you think we can brand and also bring out the artist in that perspective so that we don't necessarily concentrate on how hot you are, but we can do both. We can both concentrate on how hot you are and how heavy your bars are. Um, good question. Um, I think Femi said something about that earlier, and she said the professionalism is so important. For me, um, one of the main reasons I was, I was super, super tomboy, because I realized really quick was, I'm the only female in this backstage. Do I want to come here in a mini skirt so all the boys are looking at my legs? Or do I want to come here and get attention because of the bars I'm spitting, right? I think as women, we have the power to decide that. What do you want to be seen as? How do you want to present, present yourself? I'm not saying dress like Nas. That's up to you. But she said it. Be professional. You can come up there dressed how you want, but how you carry yourself. We already have those, um, you know, people have that idea. If, if you're going to come on stage dressed in a certain way, that you're just an easy chick, I can, can just talk to you how I want as a, as a, as a promoter, as, you know, the, the manager, as whoever, right? But like Femi said, if you are professional, if you have your boundaries, the respect is always going to be there. And just like disrespect, people say, ah, Yule Yukoivi, she's just super easy to get to. It's the same with being professional. People say, don't mess with Femi. Or don't mess with Nas, she's not going to take it. She'll embarrass you, right? So I think it's up to you as a woman in the industry to carry yourself how you want people to see you like, how do you want to present yourself? How do you want people to take you seriously? Is it because of how you dress? Uh, Kasiva said it as well. Is it because of your talent? Are they seeing you as a woman with talent or just talent? And I think the best thing about being a woman is you carry that choice and that answer of how you present yourself to people. Yeah. And also, I think once... When you're a woman, please don't, don't even feel like kuku am tough, it's something that should scare you, you know? Uh, the, the type of us, like the rappers, uteke wa kitu fulani, anakuanga kichwangumu, anakuanga siju aje. If you're here and you're a female creative, that is part of your professionalism that comes naturally. If you want to get to where you should be, you have to have that. So that's all. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Sosuna, Zizi, and Femi One. Before I wrap up the show, anything you'd like to say, anything you can look out for, just an opportunity to say anything before we, I wrap up. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And I have a new song in it, Tungi. Please make sure we <laughs> get YouTube, we check it. And also a very big shout out to Sosun. I love what she's doing with Chekina. You know, you guys, you should check out Shekina. She's a very dope, dope rapper. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm just going to say a uh, big thank you to you guys one more time. Um, and also big respect to you guys for just, you know, representing the culture, 
representing hip hop, doing what you can. If you ever need my support, I'm just a call away, see Jawa Block, any of you guys. And uh, yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, to, to every creative who's a mother as well, and Nico, so soon, in the future, we hope. Um, it is possible to be a great mother and to be a creative as well. Don't ever be scared of that. Um, don't ever feel like you, can't, you have to choose one over the other. Like Sosun said, just take care of your health, take care of yourself, surround yourself with amazing people. Um, and basically, I think we are the future, right? So let's keep shining. And yeah, the future is now, right? And big respect to all the creatives, big respect to Aniko. We love you so much. And thank you for everything you're doing for the industry as well. And big respect. Thanks, guys. Okay, for me, Aniko, please allow me to, uh, to name my artists. Yes. So this is the platform. So I have Shekina Karen. She's such a dope rapper. Uh, she grew up in Kayole. Shekina is young, yeah, but she has, she's a mom already. She has two kids. So the only thing she can do is rap. The only thing she loves doing is rap. So with everything we have, that's the effort we are trying. So come on, Koapa, just go listen to her. I also have CEO. Uh, he's very good in poetry. He's also a rapper and a vocalist, a music teacher. He's one of my artists. I have Lil Chulo. He's a rapper. He's a very, very dope rapper. He's only 19. And then I have a very good producer, Anaitwa Bramsey. He's working also with Dr. Pizzo. He's young, but he's one of my producers. So I need you guys, please, to support us. Thank you so much, Aniko, for this platform. This is something we call it up. This is amazing. This is, this is so dope. This is amazing. We want to see more of it. Now to talk you like artists, we, you have to support so that when Femi is not here, Nazizi and so soon, next weekend there are other artists, yeah? So thank you guys. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for soon, Nazizi and Femi One. I promise you all it's going to be a special episode. It's going to be an amazing conversation with a spotlight on the role of women and the females in the industry, but also a celebration of hip hop and a celebration of some of the dopest rappers this continent has. It's been amazing from right here at Bia District. Thank you so much for supporting us, Bia District. Thank you so much, Australian High Commission, for also supporting. We are wrapping up. Thank you, guys. <laughs>